All right, I don't know if Kurt wants me to put this onto the channel or not, uh, but anyway, Brent's here, and I'm going to be talking about selling a cash-covered put. I'm not that smart, so you might not want to listen to me. It's not a financial advice, but I would like to try this a little bit and show you how to get them done. You can stop the video right here. Strike price is the price you select for the stock. You don't want it to reach this. All right, and we're going to talk about this later. I have an example expiration date when do you want that contract to stop some uh, some stocks let you trade a little bit later on some are every other day and some are every week and we're going to take a look at that and then you have the premium that is the money you collect right away no matter what happens whether uh, the contract expires whether it gets executed or if the company goes bankrupt you're going to be collecting that money no matter what again there are other terms to be able to know but those are the pretty much the three basic ones all right the strike price, expiration date, and premium all change. So here's an example from Robinhood. I'm not a Robinhood fan, but it was one of the easiest ones to navigate. So if you're at Robinhood, this is where you'll find the strike price. That's what you think the company won't go to, the stock it won't go to. You're making a bet. Expiration date, when is this contract going to expire? Uh, again, some of them uh, expire every other day, like SPY or uh, QQQ rather, and some change every week, and this one changes about once a month. And then you have what's called the bid price on Robinhood. Everybody else calls it premium. Now, some things to remember. This is kind of important, all right? You need to have a certain amount of money in your account. You're, you might not be using it. You might not have to spend a single dime, but you need to at least have the money to cover it. Why it's called a cash covered put. So make sure you have enough money to buy a 100 shares of whatever stock it is. So if the stock is trading at five bucks, which we're gonna show, five times 100 shares is 500 bucks. So you need $500 in your account. If the stock is trading at $200 per share, it's 100 shares times $200, that's $20,000. You're not gonna spend $20,000, but you need to at least have that in your account. Buying the contract, you're only buying one contract, that's called selling your put, but you might possibly be buying 100 shares of it, that's called the obligation. Again, one contract is equal to 100 shares. What do you want? These are the outcomes that you want to have happen. Like me, I don't truly want these shares. I don't want these $100. I just want to collect the premium. That's the money going right into your pocket right away. I want the stock to stay above the strike price. If it goes a little bit below the strike price, which I'll show you later, that's okay, I'll still make money. But I want it to stay above if I want to collect the full money or full premium. If you do want the stock, you should pretty much be treating this as like a limit order and the stock will go below the strike price, then again, that's great. You just got that stock that you want at a discount plus the premium. So like, let's say if the stock is trading at $6 a share, but you want it at five dollars a share, and you put a you sell a put, and it drops below, 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 and it go it goes below five bucks. You collected the premium, and you got the stock at five bucks instead of six bucks where it was before. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to know for a lot of these selling puts. Now, people get into like the the Greeks they call them like the I don't know the gammas, the deltas, and all that stuff. And I'm sure that's really important, and I'd probably make more money if I knew any of that stuff but I don't, so let's look into one. All right, let's jump in and actually sell a put right now. So I normally don't use Robinhood, it's not my main account, that's why there's only like seven bucks in it, but I use it to be able to research a couple of things. So let's say I had this company Goss right here, and let's say I've been researching them, and I think that what they're gonna do is either trade straight flat or go up a little bit. Uh, they can go down a little bit depending on what you want your strike price to be, but let's take a look at it now. So. I'm gonna go down here to where it says trade goss options. Not every company has the trade options, but they do. Remember, go to sell and put. A lot of people forget that. Don't forget that. Here we have our strike price, our expiration date, and the bid price. Robinhood calls it bid price. Everybody else calls it a premium. Remember, premium is the money you will be collecting right away when you make this contract. Expiration date is when you want this contract to expire. 
and your strike price is what you think the price won't go to. So here we have our options. Right now, Goss is trading at $8.56. Here, we have a strike price at $7.50. So I could be like, hey, I don't think it's going to go to $7.50. I'm going to click on here. And I'm immediately going to be collecting $290. Now, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. But if I think it's $7.50, I'm going to click on here. If I think it's going to drop a little lower than $7.50, which I normally do. I'm a little more conservative. I think it's not going to go below 5 bucks. I'm going to click on this. So we have a $5 put. I'm collecting $145 right away. Now what we need to remember about doing puts is that this is for 100 shares. That's why it says $1.45, but I'm going to collect $145. So this is why it's called the cash covered put. You have to have enough, enough cash to cover 100 shares times five bucks. That's what all this comes out to make sense. I'll talk about that in a little bit. So I hit continue. One contract is 100 shares. So I need to have 500 bucks in my account to, because it's 100 shares times five bucks. That's what this whole thing comes into play. So as we can see, the price right now is $8.56. I selected that $5 put, that strike price. As you can see, I'm, this bar is not moving because I still collect my $145. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Five bucks. This was the strike price. Once it gets below five bucks, I still collect money overall. I still make a profit, but it starts to drop down. Where the break even price is, this is where the little the math comes into play. So we sold our five dollars times hundred shares. So that's five hundred dollars that we had to at least cover. If it gets below that five dollar price, that's when we start to lose a little bit of money, because now it's dropped below the five hundred dollars minus one hundred and forty five. Now you can get into this and all that stuff, but it pretty much for me comes down to you don't want to go up, go below this strike price. This way you collect the full premium. Okay, now let's look at another example. MSTR, MicroStrategy. I did a couple of them. Now with these guys, you go down here to trade again. Sell, put. Again, we have our strike price, expiration date, bid price. Again, that's called a premium in every other world. Now, they're trading at $183. So we're going to need a little bit more money to be able to cover it because it's times 100 shares. Let's say uh, I don't think it'll drop below 170 bucks. I'm going to look over here, 170. I'll be collecting $280 if this is what I want to do. Remember, it's 100 shares times $2.80. Now, you might be like, well, why would I do this one versus Goss? Well, if you notice the expiration date, this one's going to be ending in a few days. So, that's why this is you can earn a little bit more money because this trades more frequently. Now, it all depends on how risky you want to get. I'm pretty conservative. So even at 183, it probably won't go below 170 by now. Um, but I would still be like 160. I feel more comfortable doing this or excuse me, even 155. For me, my goal is always 100 or 200 dollars a week. Uh, it all depends on how risky it is versus, and you have to research it a little bit. It all depends. So, but let's say I'm really, really risky right now. $180. I click here. Now, remember, it's 100 shares for one contract. So, I'm doing 100 times 180, which is 18000 So, I need to at least have $18,000 in my account. I'm not going to use that $18,000 but I might, that's what that obligation comes into. That means if the price goes below $180 here, then I'll be on the hook for the $18,000. That's why it, come, it gets a little risky. So let's go back to Goss and we'll take a look at this one. I like them, they're just a little bit cheaper. So again, I don't think it's gonna go, low, go below five bucks. I click on here. That's why I need to have $500 in my account to cover this if it goes below the $5 strike price. Again, I'll still make money, but you need to at least have 500 bucks in your account. 
So another one that I've used is SI. Again, these guys trade every week too. Sell, put. Here's my strike price. This is where I, I'm going to make my bet that I don't think it'll go below that. My expiration date. The bid price, again, or premium. They're a little bit more volatile. They have been a little bit more. They've traded okay recently. Um, but I think I've been selling puts on them around the $22 area, something like this. But it was much higher before. Let's look at 25 bucks. So again, 25 bucks times 100 contracts or 100 shares. That's one contract. That's $2,500 that I need in my account if I want to make this bet. Again, I don't have to spend that money. I might, but I don't have to. It all depends if this price goes below 25 bucks. Hit continue. One contract, 100 shares. Again, you can mess around with this to know where's your profit margin. Uh, where do you start to make a loss is once you get below that certain price, the break even. Again, that's some math stuff where you know you have to do your strike price times 100 shares minus your profit, your premium that you collected. And that's when you just have to be smarter than me, which isn't very hard. All right, that's pretty much it for selling puts. Hopefully this works. If I'm doing it wrong, please let me know.